I want to talk about this because I just finished this recently. Episode seven of Flipping Hijack happened, right? And I have to be honest, it was a pretty big disappointment. Episode seven of Flipping Hijack was a huge, huge, huge disappointment. And I should have known, to be honest, because of the premise of the show wasn't the greatest, right? Essentially, Idris Elba stars in this show where he... Um, is on board a flight that gets hijacked by a group of hijackers um you know it's not the usual um arab country guys they're all from different parts of the world and you know until the end you figure out that basically their fucking um motive for hijacking a plane was money so that's a pretty interesting premise because i've not heard of that before so essentially they were saying that in the show that the hijackers again spoiler alert but you know you're not going to watch it probably you're not going to watch this show but spoiler alert anyway the premise of the show is that the hijackers hijacked the plane because they wanted to get money. And how they were going to get money is that because they hijacked the plane and were threatening to kind of crash it into the central center of London or whatever it may be, or just fly around with, you know, themselves without a pilot and shit, that would affect the stock price. Right? But then when if when it when it did land, the stock price would then shoot back up again when everyone was safe. So they were basically would bet on the stock market and make loads of money that way. So that's kind of what they were kind of doing. And, you know, that premise was okay. But by the end of the show, like, you know, especially episode seven, you were sat there thinking, this kind of feels like Prison Break. I remember Prison Break, the first season was fucking phenomenal because of the whole idea behind it, these guys trying to escape prison, right? But then as soon as they did escape prison, the premise of the show just fell flat. Like you didn't need to watch it anymore. The whole kind of build up anticipation for the show was the fact that you were watching you know what waiting to see how it played out like how are they going to get out of this fucking prison and the same thing goes for idris elba show hijack like how is he going to get this plane to land safely so everybody on board can go and see their families and all these individual stories of people who are flying to different places to go see people blah 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 but yeah it was incredibly disappointing at the end and again not that i need to say this because i think most of you guys would agree but this again gave me more pause for thought about the whole controversy happening now with the writer strike and shit. I just don't think these guys have a leg to stand on because I don't think you could write a worse show with AI. I think an AI could easily write the script for this show. Easily. Like super, super easily. So if that's the case, these actors and these writers and shit or whatever, these show producers, they need to really really take a long hard look at the quality of shows that they're actually putting out with their blood sweat and tears the amount of money that it costs to bloody get writers together to write this fucking shitty script and they used to think to themselves hey a decent you know couple of fucking chat gpt prompts could probably produce this level of a show with their eyes closed do you know what i mean or via fucking 3g right it could do it pretty easily in about 10 minutes because this show was really 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 shit at the end and you know idris elba i fucking love the guy but he doesn't work for free so you can only imagine how much they had to pay for that guy to get out of bed to film this fucking shit and yo i think i think sag or whatever these guys are they're definitely gonna end up winning because I, I think in the long run most people are gonna end up buckling and in the you know and in the short term for us viewers there's not much difference between chat GPT shit, AI, and the writer's work. It doesn't really exist that way. And just another kind of aside to kind of end it, this guy here is meant to be playing Idris Elba's son on the show. And he's meant to be 18. I'm sorry, guy. Like, you're decent enough as an actor, but this guy does not look 18. This show, it really threw me off every time he was on screen because he was clearly trying to act like a kid but he's a grown man, you know, like, or he looks like one at least, right? So it was really difficult to kind of get in on the show because on the show, this kid is meant to be Idris Elba's son. Like the son that's like caught between, you know, his dad and his mom because they're divorced. And then his stepdad comes in with a police officer. Like this is meant to be an 18 year old kid. And it really threw me off watching the show, like to kind of keep that, like, what's going on here? Like, why is he on screen? Why are you trying to act like him? And like, he should be Idris's brother or something, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> or his little nephew or something but he can't be his fucking son that doesn't make any sense so yeah it was an interesting show to watch very very bizarre um i also thought this trope of this lady who was walking at who was working in the um, what's the thing called 
mission control, whatever it's called, flight control place. Um, she essentially plays a role of this single mum who's always late to work, but always ha but also happens to be really good at what she does. You know, like I thought that trope was a bit cringy because she was she kind of was the one that kind of saved the day. And not really, but she did in a bit, you know, in the background. She came late. I think on the show they said that she could arrive like 30 minutes late and was still able to kind of sit down on her desk and, you know, do her fucking role and shit. It just felt a little bit forced to kind of have her. She never listens to her manager. Um, it kind of felt a little bit like the woman in fucking Star Trek Discovery. Um, I forgot what her fucking name was, but that awful let that awful role, that lady on that role, just kind of ruined that show. So it was a, that kind of threw me off a little bit. But overall, not too bad. Again, if you have absolutely nothing to watch and you are struggling to put something on TV, maybe you can watch Hijack with Idris Elba, but don't expect anything amazing. Like Idris is a good enough actor, is a great enough actor, sorry, to hold this show together. But Jesus Christ, man, it was tough to get through. Very, very, very tough to get through. So I don't encourage anybody to fucking go and try and make that happen because it's going to be a dark, dark old time for ya. I tell you this, I tell you this.